Hi parents, today we're going to talk about another activity that will work on cutting and scissors skills. We are going to do a turkey bister activity. The activity is appropriate for uh, children who are three years old and up. It is considered also another beginner activity for cutting skill skills however we are going to talk about ways that we could change the activity to make it easier or to make it a bit harder you can probably get away for someone who's just a little bit shy of three years old you'll just end up with a lot of mess now the activity will work on few skills that you would need to kind of prepare your child to hold a pair of scissors and cut so skills like improving grip strength and endurance if you think about it your child has to squeeze the little balloon thing at the top the ball thing at the top and he has or she has to sustain the grip to um, hold the water in until they kind of let it go so uh, it works on increasing your muscle strength in the hand but it also requires some eye-hand coordination. Similar to the activity uh, that we did last week, they have to transfer um, some liquid or water from one container to the other. So to be able to coordinate such that you're sucking in the water from one container and moving it to the next container. It also requires some precision, precision and proprioception. Now, depending on the kind of container you're using, you're going to have to really make sure that you're aiming right so you're not spilling outside, uh, but also the amount of um, sort of pressure that you're using to be able to uh, create enough sucking power and also hold the, the liquid in and then letting it go. Now I'll go over some of the material you need for the main activity. For the main activity, you need some water, two or more deep containers, a turkey baster, food dye or watercolor. Now you can get a way of doing this activity without any coloring. Adding the color will just add more fun and engagement to, with your child. And then also you could add some enriching components, which I'll go over at the end of the slides. Um, you could also end up needing more material if you're wanting to use any of the suggested modifications later on. Next, I'll go over the activity description now that I kind of gave you some prompts about it. Um, so really all you need uh, to be very basic, two or more deep containers or dishes, uh, a turkey baster, food or watercolor, and some water. Next, you're gonna either instruct or model with your child um, using the turkey baster to transfer the colored water from one dish to another. If you're using different colors, then you'll have uh, obviously multiple containers um, and then you're transferring from one to the other. Now I'm going to go over some ways you can modify the activity to make it either harder or easier depending on what you see uh, when you practice the main activity with your child. So to make it harder, uh, you could do uh, multiple things. First, you could use a medicine syringe instead. So now that requires a bit more precision and it requires more, uh, it requires both of your hands to kind of coordinate pulling the syringe and sucking the water in and then pushing and transferring. Um, you could also play around with the size of containers that you're transferring the liquids to and from. By making the container a little bit smaller, that means you really have to be precise so you're not missing and splashing outside. So you could see, I mean, um, you could use an ice tray uh, that would be really smaller and then you really require that require that precision or if you have a mini muffin tray um, the picture doesn't show the mini muffin tray but you get the idea and then also um, you are using cups plastic cups so again the idea you're using something that's smaller it's narrower you require more precision and like this last activity i mentioned using timing 
so timing can be frustrating to some, it can be motivating to some. So depending on your child's personality, if it's motivating, adding that competitive sort of nature to it, go ahead. You could do uh, like a 30 second timer and then let's see how many uh, ice tray cubes we're going to fill. Next, I'm going to go through some ways you can modify the activity to make it a little bit easier. So if your child has smaller hands, so they're on the younger end of the spectrum, or they're having more challenges with their fine motor control, then you could have the child use the two hands to squeeze the bulk together, uh, to suck the water in and then letting it and sucking uh, and let, squeezing it out or letting the water fall out. Um, so you could also skip the transferring step altogether. So if sustaining that grip long enough to move the water or the liquid from one container to the other is hard and challenging, uh, then you could just practicing the squirting action. Um, you could do it even in the bathtub if you have a younger child and then control is a bit of a challenge. Then you're avoiding the mess, you're adding some water play. Uh, or if you have the squirt uh, toys, the rubber toys that you can squirt water out of, you could practice that skill in the bathtub and then move out and use the turkey baster. So now I'm going to go over some ways to enrich the activity. So we're not just now focusing on the fine motor skills or the cutting skills. We're adding other stuff into the activity. So one way to do that is to work on identifying colors. So you could go sort of the straightforward question, what color is this? And then, uh, if your child is able, they can tell you the color. Now, let's say your child has some speech difficulty. They may know the color, but they don't have the word. And our goal here is to work on color identification. So what we're going to do instead is you could say, where is or can you find me the this color? And then if they have if you have multiple colors on the table, then they can point to the one that is yellow or red. Um, but let's say you don't have multiple colors, you have one or two, and you just want to make sure that they're not guessing or it was a good guess. You could do, um, we can line up markers with, with different colors and you could say, which marker has the same color as the water or this water? Can you match? Um, so again, this way you are kind of detouring from having the child say the word. You could also practice more and less than. So this is probably a little bit uh, more appropriate for a kindergarten level than a preschooler. Um, but again, children vary quite a bit. Uh, but for a kindergarten uh, child, I think this would be uh, a good practice. So you could have, uh, just don't make it too confusing. So have two dishes that are exactly the same size. And while they're transferring the water, you could say, oh, wait, um, now can you tell me which bowl has more water in it? Is it this one or this one? Um, or which bowl has less water? Is it this one or this one? Um, and then you could work on more and less than. Another way to enrich the activity is if you do have multiple children in your household, um, you could have uh, them all involved in the activity and you could do a rotation. So either if you have multiple turkey basters, you can have each one work at a different color and then they switch. Or they can do sort of a rotation by having one take a turn, the other waits, and then another one takes the second turn. In this way, you are working on turn taking, waiting, uh, but there's also a better chance of having some conversation going on because then you could, uh, things like conflict might happen. Oh, it's my turn. Oh, it's not. Or, you know, you're, uh, I came here first. So these are ways, the natural, those natural learning moments you could use to help the child to wait and take turn 
uh, by creating those situation, social situations that won't necessarily, that won't happen if you're just working one-on-one. -on -one. Um, but that's a different way of adding the two. You obviously may choose to try and avoid all of that conflict, which is a different story. But if you're really trying to enrich it, you could have that um, challenge added. Um, this sums up the end of the presentation. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I hope you have, you have a chance to practice that this week. Um, and if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to email me. Thank you.